Greetings, greetings, greetings. I uh, welcome for, welcome to Level Up Live. It is hashtag family Friday. Um, and yeah, uh, today we are going to do something different. We are going to introduce one or two families from around the globe that are world schooling. And and in terms of my own leveling up, the how I'm going to introduce these is is technically uh, something I haven't done before on the show. So um, watch this space. So for those of you who have been uh, following, you'll know that this is live and impromptu. And part of uh, it being impromptu is that I am I am experimenting and learning as I go with broadcasting and and delivering a live show and so i purposefully leave some uh my planning and preparation to the show so that you can see how i am adapting and how i am learning what what needs to be done so if you've been watching you'll know that just a few weeks ago we we couldn't uh we couldn't get the the camera the canon camera going so i am coming at you at the moment i'm looking directly down the screen of my macbook pro and i should train myself to actually look at the little dot above as opposed to the screen but um i was determined to make use of this technology i have available and i own a uh, canon mirrorless camera and i've been meaning to sort of use it. And I knew I could use it for these lives with the Ecamm Live software uh, as a camera source. And I'll tell you a bit more that, uh, about that in a minute. So uh, so uh, tonight, uh, because where I am, it's 10 past 10 or quarter past 10 now in Central Europe and just trying to get the kids to bed and do everything. Uh, yeah, it's just, just can't always get everything quite prepared, but I've learned something new today that is going to facilitate us bringing some families onto the show. So I'm really excited. So even if they can't come on live, well, you're going to see some other world schooling families. So I need to do a bit of backtracking and a bit of housekeeping. So you're going to see me try and cover off that. And in the same process, I'm also going to try and set up my studio um, with the new setup and we get the new camera. So I'm gonna move that over there, just unplugged. I don't think that'll be a major problem in the short term. Okay, so first of all, if you are new to the show, excuse me one second. Sorry about that, I uh, didn't have my lead plugged in and I don't think the computer would cope. So, if you're new to the show, first thing first, let's do some housekeeping. Where in the world are you? We would love to know what uh, what does lockdown look like for you? What are you, um, where you are, what, yeah, what, where you are, what's, what, what sort of conditions are you under and uh, how are you using that time? And you can just leave some comments in the chat or feel free to come on the show. So. Tonight, um, I haven't set up Skype. Usually, um, I have a link where have a link where you can have a link where you can click on it and come on the show. So, what I'm going to do tonight is, if you want to come on the show, uh, you join in. Just leave a comment in the chat, and I will fire Skype up. But so I probably should turn off tonight's um, tonight's URL. Let's just turn that off right now. Yeah. Nice, join the show URL. Okay, don't know what happened there. Um, so yeah, and uh, but if you do want to come on the show, just let me know. I am going to just fire up my YouTube channel so that I know when, here we go. I'm just going to pause that so we don't get interrupted by me. 
So yeah, if you're new to the show, you'll know there's a delay between me actually talking and it coming through on YouTube. And in the first few shows, I would be broadcasting and then suddenly you'd hear me coming through uh, on the output and that was causing a bit of a confusion. Anyway, so yeah, if, if you're new to the show, make sure you uh, leave a comment in the chat and yeah, tell us where in the world you are. So Level Up Live, what's it all about and why am I here and why am I pushing myself and why might you want to join in? So it came about sort of serendipitously. Um, first of all, I'm Colin Clack from Parenting Passports and Profits. You can find out a little bit more about myself and my family here. We are a world schooling family. Uh, that's myself, my partner Ellie, and our two young girls. Uh, we have a six-year-old and a 15-month-old. And we have been world schooling or location independent for uh, just over three years. February 2017, we started out on this journey and and we're still going. So we have, we're originally from New Zealand. We left with one child and to try and start a new life. Um, I'm not gonna talk about that t tonight, but if you want to know, you head on over to the about page at parentingpassportsandprofits.com and you start to get a feel for that. And about halfway through um, the last few years, we found out we were pregnant while we were in Indonesia. And so we went back to New Zealand at the end of 2018 to bring baby number two into the world. And as soon as we found out that she was fit and healthy and we pretty much disposed of all our possessions back in New Zealand, we became a world schooling family of four and left with our little one when she was less than 10 weeks old and headed to Vietnam. Uh, which incidentally I'm going to introduce uh, well, Vietnam is going to feature in uh, the show a bit later on. So that's who I am, and you can find out a bit more about um, ourselves there. Uh, remember, if you're just coming on the show, let's just uh, we'll get rid of that. Please introduce yourself. Let us know where in the world you are. What does lockdown look like? We'd love to know and meet you and hear what's, hear what's going on for you. So remember, just say hi. Use the chat. Uh, lets me know that uh, someone is watching and that yeah, and I can get to care and empathize about where you are. So please say hi. We, uh, yeah, so let's give you the background to Level Up Live and, and why I hope that you will join me and, and, and level up in, in whatever way you want to. So it came about quite spontaneously. Uh, as a result of probably about five different things sort of coming together um, and and me deciding to act, act on it and take action and not procrastinate and, and that's what it's all about. So the first one was I was listening to a podcast by one of my friends who have come across on our travels, very inspiring uh, young man, uh, Frenchman Patrick, who, sorry, Martin, who we met in uh, Bali, Indonesia. But I haven't seen much of him in the last couple of years, but I was listening to his podcast, and during this podcast, he talked about while this period of our lives, COVID-19, is, is, is um, having such a um, dramatic effect on our lives, he was challenging us to not waste this opportunity. And uh, he said it's the one period in our life, you know, um, where a lot of us, and that's not everyone, obviously the essential workers are just, I mean, hats off to those guys, I couldn't do their job in a in a period when when it's not like this. So amazing people, uh, but a lot of us have found that we have a different amount of time. Uh, and when I say that, I want to sort of caveat that we've always had the same amount of time, and often all that separates us is how we use them. But all of us have had to readjust how our time is spent. And for a lot of people, you know, eat yourself silly. Now is the time to not use that excuse that you don't have time. It is the time to, to, to invest in yourself and, and, and move, you know, yeah, invest in yourself so that at the end of this period, when you come out of it, you, you feel a, you're a better person or you've moved on, you've developed yourself in some way and you only have yourself to blame if 
you don't do that and others have moved on. And that can be a fun thing, by the way. You know, it's, this isn't about somebody taking life really serious or anything. You know, maybe you've always wanted to learn a musical instrument or learn a new language or exercise your creative side with some painting or drawing or whatever. You know, take this opportunity to, to do it. Don't, don't let this opportunity go. So Martin sowed this seed. Now, for those of you who know me and, and Ellie, we're, we are um, committed lifelong learners. We are always upskilling and learning new things. And we talk about in our own family about how all of us are the teachers and all of us are the facilitators and all of us are the students. In other words, we let our daughter know, so our eldest daughter who's six, we let her know that she is our teacher. She's teaching us stuff every day so that we can become better parents, better adults, because she is teaching us and sort of leveling the playing field so that we're all contributing to meaningful relationships within our own family and making our lives better. And the second event was, so, so sorry, the reason I shared that little uh, anecdote was because when Martin put forward this challenge in his podcast, I didn't specifically jump on that as right no I, I need to do something right now because I'm con I'm always reading and I'm always listening to something that's going to grow my business I kind of practice a Pat Flynn advice you know just in time learning because Ellie and I have radically changed our lives in the last three years we've had to learn new skills in order to survive and thrive and, and go forward with with a new life and we can talk about that another day second thing was about a week later I was introduced to Trey out in Mexico. Now, I hadn't met Trey personally. We are both belong to the World Schoolers Movement. Um, and a mutual friend of ours, good mutual friend, Lainey, she uh, facilitated us hooking up because Trey was trying to breathe life into a small business um, mastermind group through the, world, through the World Schoolers Facebook groups. And I wanted to attend and contribute and be part of that group. Uh, but the time zones were just making it a little bit challenging to, to sort of pull it off. And so we, we hooked up one-to-one, -one, had a chat, and he shared a bit about his past, and I shared a bit about mine, and we realized that there was, there was definitely some scope for, for, for me to get involved in some shape or form. Um, I have a, had a background in business mentoring and coaching, and I, I ran an accountability group for, for a number of years. So we, we just decided that we would just it was nice to meet each other, and we would just uh, both sleep on um, what would unfold, uh, how the, the group would unfold, and my ability to, to contribute. So, uh, so that's what we did. I kind of um, well, hung up that call and, and decided I would just, just sleep and see what kind of manifested itself in terms of energy, feeling, timing, and all those things, priorities, and see if there was a way we could make it work. And then Ellie, Ellie and I, then the third thing was that Ellie and I were sort of reflecting as COVID-19 sort of really kicked in and we were reflecting on, on all the, you know, what was happening out there and realizing, it, you know, the, the sort of lockdown was serious and the, the ability to connect and chat was, was severely reduced. As, it, as this started to unfold, we, we, we felt we wanted to make ourselves available to anyone who was feeling um, well we just were actually we just wanted to make ourselves available uh, to, to connect to have a bit of fun to laugh to joke with anyone who wanted to whether that was old friends and family whether that was new acquaintances um, or whether that was people we'd met on our travels we just wanted to make ourselves available and, and, and do that we we're in rural France house sitting and we feel quite lucky that where we've landed up is uh, in terms of how it how it affects our family it, we feel totally blessed because we've got wide open spaces we're in a hamlet where there's no there's no there's no village so we're surrounded by countryside fields and we can we can see countryside as far as the eye can see so we, we can go out and get fresh air there's woods there's wildlife in the woods we've seen reindeer and rabbits and uh, it's wonderful and and so even though we're quite isolated we would have been isolated even if they hadn't locked us down so 
uh, we're not getting to practice any French, which is a shame because we, we were kind of keen to do that, but we feel quite blessed. And so we offered up our calendars for anyone who wanted to um, come into our calendars and, and ask us any questions or bounce some ideas around, and we did that. And we just posted on social media, but I knew that that was, we didn't want to be just posting on social media, hook into our calendar, and uh, but we didn't really have a plan on, on how we could do anything about it. Then the fourth thing is I started to see that some of my inspirations and mentors online were hosting this type of uh, ask me anything uh, chat, uh, the sort of live uh, format, whether that was on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. And so at this point, the sort of all of these things were coming together. And the fifth thing that sort of sealed the deal was I have been wanting to do more live video for quite some time. You know, uh, when we went back to New Zealand to have the baby invested in this better camera, we were very, we didn't have much in the way of equipment or good equipment that we could rely on. Um, but we knew we wanted to carry on. We've been creating a lot of content and we just got to get better at getting it out there. But we, editing is a pain in the backside. It's not our bag. Neither of us enjoy it. Uh, well, Ellie doesn't do any of that. I can do it, but it, it, it's just not poor use of my time. And I'm, my perfectionist streak kicks in, and it, it, it's not, it's not, it's not good use of my time. Um, I've got to find a way to sort of battle through that. But I, with live video, you don't need to do editing. So you know, just show up and and do it. And I'd invested in some software called Ecamm Live, which is what I'm broadcasting. I'm broadcasting this live tutorial, so I'm broadcasting this live show using the Ecamm Live software. So it's the thing that allows me to sort of switch on the that. It's the thing that allows me to go, you know, where in the world are you? It allows me to uh, share my screen. Uh, allows me to do things like, you know, so we're not going to do it tonight, but if we wanted to do a website review, I could go on over here. And as you can see, I'm sitting on the other side. We can put a little stop stopwatch on. And um, behind this kind of computer is my screen shared where I've just paused the video playback so I don't, don't get uh, that. And then um, and we could we could do a we could do a uh, um, we could do a website review. So how we support ourselves. Ellie is a free, freelance writer. Actually, if you want to learn more about Ellie, you can head on over to elliemcginnis.com. She's a holistic health professional. She is uh, got her own website, and uh, you can yeah, very holistic in her approach. You, she offers quite a lot, and you can find out all about that over there. I do online marketing, search engine optimization, keyword research. Um, site audits, technical SEO. So if you're interested in that, sorry, I put the wrong website up. There we go. Uh, online marketing done for you.com. Head on over there. You can find out uh, a little bit more and see if we, we might be of some value to you. So um, wanted to do live video. Uh, I had invested in this Ecamm Live software uh, for a number of months and after a sort of good binge start I didn't I didn't make any further use of it and just got sidetracked in other projects and it's been eating away at me so I decided kind of when all these things came together I was like no now's the time for me to 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 level up you know Martin's sort of challenge came out to the fore and I was like okay it, it's enough I am I am gonna. I am just gonna dive in with a with a, a, a live show, and and just get on with it. And I'm gonna use the camera. I'm gonna work out how this camera works. So what I'm doing now is I've after a bit of trial and error in the first two weeks. We're on our fifteenth show now, and uh, after a bit of trial and error, I got the camera working. There was a few little finicky things that I just wasn't aware of, and. So now it's a camera source. I'm about to fire that up. So just um, it's just a small. I've only got a meter cable here, but it's just a small USB, USB C, uh, and into the USB on the MacBook Pro. I just plug that in over there, and what should happen? So I did. How I'm actually broadcasting? What I've got a thing called a scene. 
And this scene is configured to see this camera that I'm about to plug in. So the fact that the camera's not plugged in, it's just picked up the default camera. But when I plug this in, I'm curious to see what happens. It's not turned on at the moment, but um, I'm just going to work on the basis that it is, I've got it raised a little bit higher than I normally have, just fractionally. And what should happen is this camera should kick in. Uh, I think it is. I reckon it's, I think it's coming in. Just, ah, uh, so it's coming in, but I haven't allowed it to see me. So, <laughs> There we go. Welcome. <laughs> and so that's an example of the, 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 the software automatically is configured that the scene I'm in knows that I should be using this camera here. So I can see myself over here, uh, slightly distracted. And this is part of me, you know, my own leveling up. Um, you know, how can I run a show where I am using the equipment? Uh, I can bring comments on board. I can um, bring effects on board. I can bring guests on board. I say tonight we're not going to be we're not going to be having live guests unless someone reaches out to me personally. Um, and then as I got this camera working, and I'm just I'll just do that. I'm not too sure. There's things I can do with the camera that I've got to got to learn. So I might uh, no. I, we're going to we're going to show Tech Tuesday. So maybe on Tech Tuesday I will uh, dive behind the scenes and see if I can dig a bit deeper what I can do with with the camera. But part of leveling up is that I get used to actually talking to this camera and not get distracted by this. But if I wanted to, I can just use my keyboard and go, uh, what happened then? My keyboard's frozen. Um, Just through a keyboard show, I can move over to to this camera and then back again to this one. And so I just want to get better at broadcasting, put it on a more entertaining show, making sure that you have uh, either subjects or people of interest to, to go. But the only way I can get better is by leveling up, coming online each night. I'm going to keep with this time for the time being. It's not convenient for our family. It's make, having a bit of an impact. But we're working on whether we can do it during the day. But, but unless I actually turn up and do these shows, I am not going to get better at them. And so this is where we're at. So yeah, if you look at the first ones, you'll be able to compare how I'm doing compared to how I'm now. And then hopefully in a month's time, we'll see how I'm doing then. So excuse me, I'm going to flick to the camera, back to this, this camera. And... We are going to get rid of that. So yeah, there's little things like this. Uh, I'm going to turn off the. Um, I'm going to turn that off. There's something going on with that. Don't know why that is. Oh, it's because it's locked. Clever. Clever. Okay. Really cool. Just learned something new. I can lock the scene so I don't damage them. So, <laughs> Um, normally, I really want that Skype link because that allows different people to come on the show. So, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm learning as I go, and I have put myself out there that you can come on the show and share what, whatever you're doing and how are you leveling up. So, as things have got a bit more settled down and I kind of feel like I know what I'm doing, I want to reintroduce some themes that would give us something to level up around. And I, I had these in mind um, back when we were in Vietnam, and back when we were in Vietnam, and I, I, I started to, to use the software and did a few Facebook Lives, and, um, but just sort of burned out a little bit, couldn't, couldn't see it through. But um, we've moved on a bit, and I feel like I can, can go again. So I'm going to bring back these themes. So we started to bring these in on Wednesday. It was calling Wednesday. And yesterday was Thoughtful Thursday. Today is uh, Family Friday. And on Monday, it will be Mash Up Monday. And on Tuesday, it will be Tech Tuesday. So uh, I'm just going to run with those and invite people to come on around those things as they feel enthusiastic about one thing or another. So 
we uh, let me so let me tell you a little bit about Family Friday. So Family Friday actually is probably the most longest standing one, and we've actually been doing that pretty much from pretty much from the beginning. As soon as we started to discover there were other families out there that were inspiring us and that we realized were doing the same as us, um, we decided uh, when we got our blog up and running and we didn't know what we were doing back then, that one thing we wanted to do was make sure that we lived and learned from these people and we wanted to promote them. So we reached out to as many as we could and uh, we asked them whether we could put a, uh, their names on our website and, and then every Friday, we scheduled on a recurring basis that uh, we would feature two or three families. So if you used to look through our Facebook feed, and going back nearly three years, every single Friday, you would see two to three posts featuring other families around the world. Now, there wasn't many that we reached out to, and we ended up with about 15 to 20. And so 15, 20, just recurring. Since then, we've met many, many more, and we haven't updated those recurring posts. But there are, but we could do, and we, we and we, we we were trying to. It's just one of it's just like an admin task and a and a reconnection with with um, some of the families we've met. So when we first started, we hadn't met any of these families. Now three years on, we've met some of them, and obviously we've met hundreds others, and and we found out that they've got blogs and and YouTube channels and those sorts of things. So and so we want we want to share those so family friday has got some kind of um history and longevity and about a year ago while we were in vietnam i when i was trying to um, establish it a little bit more because we're trying to get a podcast off the ground i've been trying to do this for for quite a long while but again it's it's having that rhythm of how to produce content and not get bogged down by the tech and it's taken me and you know it's taken me just a lot of time to learn what not to do, you know, going off into, you know, we, we say our story is that we, we came on this journey accidentally as part of a recovery of burnout and a failed business uh, in New Zealand where we lost a lot and we just needed a new life. We didn't even know what that new life would look like. And, and we, we kind of accidentally fell into this, this, this lifestyle and then fell in love with it and have, and, you know, even when the baby came along when we could have changed our heart, we were like, no, we're just getting going, and and so here we are, and it's been an apprenticeship, you know, apprenticeship of learning what it takes to be location independent, how to work online, how to make money online, those sorts of things, and we are a work in progress, and so yeah, um, we, but we we we, I got these world schooling. Um, I attempted to get them going and I, and I hosted a couple of live chats. And so tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take some clips from those live chats in, in just a minute and I'm going to introduce you to a couple of the families that we've met on the way. So the whole idea was to highlight other families living location independently, world schooling, sort of people who had had full... We, we, you just kind of know that they've had life-changing events, even if it's just self-reflection about they don't want what they want. So let's see how this goes. Um, I have the ability with this software. So let's just let's just um, bring that back. So with this software, I have the ability to bring in a video clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my scene to. I'm going to change my scene to here and what right right okay apologies I believe I was talking and you couldn't hear me so I've just, what you can see on there is a paused video. Uh, let me try this, let me try this. So this all makes a bit of sense. Okay, here we go. Look at the camera. Uh, camera. How's that? That's what I want, that's what I want. So guys, 
This is me live down here, and what's behind is a video clip of an interview I did with One World Schooling Family. So the, the, this is I've never done this. I've never done this. Um, uh, bring a video in. So I'm hoping it. I'm hoping it works. So what I'll do is I'll I'll just minimize myself so I pop out and then I will play the video. So this is me. This is just a clip of a longer uh, interview. This was recorded while we were in Hoi An about a year ago, actually. I was just looking, and I've just taken 10 minutes, and this is with the Van Vegan family and, and uh, from Canada. Uh, we met these guys in Chiang Mai at a Project World Schooling Summit, and yeah, and we stayed in touch. So let's just run the video, and we'll go from there. Today I am really excited because we are planning on going live with one of these families. So we just got to overcome a couple of technical hurdles and uh, I have a request to uh, be joined by Joe's wife, Meredith Kenzie. Um, this is a beautiful and inspirational uh, Canadian family. Uh, hey, hello. Hi guys. Hi. Hello. hello. Hello, greet, greetings from Hoi An. How are you? We are We're... well. Seeing the hotline makes us miss Hoi An. That's right. So, yeah, <laughs> this world schooling family, Jonathan and Meredith, were actually one of the uh, reasons that Ali and I and the two girls have settled in uh, Hoi An. Uh, when were you guys here? Last summer in the fall. It was like July through October. Through October, yeah. Uh huh, and and tell us about your experience of Hoi An as part of your world schooling adventure. We loved it. Yeah, yeah I think the laid back life is very conducive to needed. We knew we kind of we never did like the fast travel. We were kind of like the one month, the two month type travelers, and we needed to slow down, which is why we landed in Hoi An uh, just to start working on our online businesses. Meredith was getting into online proofreading to earn some money that way. And I was still building my online psychotherapy practice, uh, which took quite a long time to figure out because we all have these dreams of being online, employed online and building online businesses, but, but you're such a small fish in a huge pond and you got to figure out the tools and the tips and the strategies to grow your business. Uh, so we're now a year a year and a half into our travels and we're starting to make some good money online. So that's been a good sigh of relief. Cool. You're jumping right ahead to yeah. the profits aspect. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. What, um, tell us, tell us a little bit about the, the catalyst to leave behind your Canadian life and how that, um, how that flows over into your parenting philosophies. So why did we leave our, what was the catalyst oh. to leave behind our life? There's so many of them. Um, big one, just that we're never going to have this time again with our kids this young. We already see it with Charlotte. Like when she was four and a half and we went to Thailand for our first sort of trial trip. We didn't know it was a trial trip really at the time, but that's what it turned into. We didn't really need to seek out friends that much. It's yeah. like running into random people on the beach was enough. And then at the beginning of our you know, first year of world schooling. Again, we didn't have to seek them out as much. We ran into them at pools and beaches and it just kind of happened. And then by the end of that first year, like when we were at the summit, we were in the full throes of, I've got to find friends with this girl. I have to find people for her to play with. Um, and I'm very curious to see if you guys end up in this similar stage with Ayla or whether it's just kid dependent or age dependent, you never know, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, we wanted to do it when they, we, I call them portable. They're portable <laughs> right now, right? We can pick them up and take them anywhere. They have very little say. And at Aria's age, two and a half, they don't care. They're happy. Whereas Charlotte's getting to an age where she has more of a say, she has more opinions. And yeah, we wanted more time with them. You know, I love yeah. my job. Jonathan loved his job. But ultimately, we have the rest of our lives to make big careers and, mm -hmm. and make lots of money and work a lot and we're not going to have this time when they're so little and they want to hang out with us so mm -hmm. i'd say that was a big mm -hmm. factor mm -hmm. 
And I think an even bigger one or the same was Jonathan having more time with them. Yeah. He'd found yeah, himself okay. in a position in Canada where the work he was doing was taking him out of town on a regular basis. And his schedule was sort of more like fluctuated more. So it was hard to like know that we had all weekend together because stuff would come up with clients and things would happen or he'd be away. And uh, he was really feeling the lack of time with the girls in particular. Okay, I am back. So, so that was 10 minutes with uh, Jonathan Van Vegan and his wife Meredith uh, Kenzie. Um, so we enjoyed that interview back in um, May 19, so May, May 2019, I think. So nearly about a year ago. And um, yeah, if you want to see the whole video, I, it's definitely on Facebook. Um, so head on over to our Facebook page. You can you can get all of that from from here, and the full interview I'm pretty sure is in our Facebook videos, and it's about 40 minutes long. Okay, so that was an experiment on my part to see whether I could actually bring video into uh, a live broadcast. Now, what actually happened while that broadcast was going? Uh, the live stream looked like it cut out but it also looked like it resumed. It's just that it, on my clock it says that the live has only been going for four minutes when it was uh, well over 30 minutes. And so I'm just gonna assume that the, the software did its bit and it just kind of pressed reset, but this isn't two different videos. So, cause I didn't do anything anyway. So before I, um, so I'm not gonna stay on too long, but I'm gonna introduce you to one more family and in a similar way. And this was Matt and Sarah. And this is a shorter clip. This is only about six minutes. So remember, this is World Schooling uh, Family Friday where the whole idea is to just introduce you to other World Schooling families. And um, hopefully going forward, I'll be able to give people a bit more notice and see if we can get some families on the show live. So remember, if you are new to the show, uh, yeah, tell us where in the world you are. We would love to know what, what lockdown looks like for you. We, we're in rural France where we just found out. So we're locked down officially until the 11th of May. But we, we just found out, we just found out yesterday that on the, does that work? We just found out yesterday that on the 11th of May, they are gonna loosen the restrictions here in France and we are gonna be able to go out and about. So at the moment, I'm the only one who's been out of the house in the last, I don't know, four, five, six weeks just to go and get the the, the groceries topped up and that, that's really been it. I mean, we don't feel trapped because we do have this a massive land to look after and we also have the countryside immediately next to it, and we've got three neighbours, of which we've only seen two. Uh, so we've got a lot of room to just breathe fresh air and, and even go out and exercise with, without sort of infringing on anyone. We're several K from the nearest village, and even in the nearest village, there's only one or two shops in the nearest bigger village. I guess you can call it a small town. That's where we go and get the groceries, that's 20k away. But poor old Ellie and the girls, they haven't been out the entire time. So I'm surprised they haven't gone crazy. Um, and we certainly had our moments, but I wouldn't say it's to do with being trapped in the home, but but who knows. So uh, yeah, so here in France, we are looking forward to uh, an ease of restrictions that's gonna allow us at least to go out and see a little bit of the country. So not everything is opening, and France has, bas France has banned all mass um, attended events until September. So they've canceled the football leagues, even behind closed doors. And uh, yeah, obviously no sort of concerts and big outdoor events like that to, to, until September. So our understanding is they're not opening up cafes and restaurants yet. And the next decision on that will be on the 2nd of June. So, but yeah, we'll, we'll take that progress and at least we can go out and um, parks, uh, parks are open, so we, we, you know, we'll go and drive to parks that we haven't been, and hopefully we can still start meeting some French people. So, 
Okay, yeah, and if you want to know how that's all going, just head on over to Parenting Passports on Profits and you should be able to get a link to our Instagram account and Ellie, Ellie posts on there fairly regularly. So, yeah, um, yeah, let us know where in the world you are. But uh, so, before we wrap up, I am going to introduce one more family. So this is another family we met at the Project World Schooling uh, Summit in Chiang Mai at the end of 2018. And yeah, Sarah and Mass, they have three kids. And let them introduce themselves. This one's only about a five or six minute clip. And let's see if we can get that working and me shutting up while they talk. So uh, I'm going to head on over to Family Friday. So, 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 uh, Sarah Mass, tell us a little bit. First of all, where are you? Where's the morning for you? Firenze, Italy. Ah, now is Florence. And Mass, this is where you're born and raised. Is that correct? Is this home? Correct. Yes, this is our home. Yes. How long have you been there? Uh, we arrived the seventh. Three weeks ago. Yeah, three yeah, weeks. Yeah, three weeks almost. And when are you moving on? <laughs> We're going to Bali next week. <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit about that, you know. Um, so I, I, why don't you fill us a little bit and uh, uh, introduce yourselves and tell us how long you've been world schooling. But then I am very curious to find out how you found yourself back in your home for one month and then you're going on and what does that feel like? Okay, you start. Okay, was uh, <clears throat> when we were in the States, we moved to the States in 2010 from Italy, Florence, where we live. And we decided to, to have this experience with the kids because our hometown at that time, I mean, the economy wasn't very good and, and there was other issues. And when we went to the States, uh, in, the, in the beginning, it wasn't a very easy. It took us like some time to adjust to different lifestyle to, uh, for us, for the kids, to find uh, what we were supposed to do over there, and how to support ourselves, and all these these normal parenting issues, let me want to say. Uh, but after a while, we we I learned first English, as you can hear, is my accent. <laughs> I was thinking that I knew <coughs> how to speak the language, but it wasn't uh, that. The <laughs> and anyway, I found my my way in the society. I was doing physical therapy here in uh, in Florence, and I did the uh, same thing over there, and teaching in the school. And Sara found her passion, like it was uh, photography. And after eight years living in the States, we decided that there wasn't uh, the life for us, I want to say. And at that point, we talked from in between the two of us and the kids. And we came to the, I just want to say, solution to change life and start traveling. And so we left June 2nd from the United States. And since then, we are traveling. Wow. And we... And just for anyone watching, we met these guys in October last year at the Project World School in Summit, which uh, I think I, you, you, you've, ex what was your experience of that? I mean, it was a life changer for us. Yes, it was. It was amazing. We were so insecure. We thought we were doing everything wrong. <laughs> and then we got there, we're like, oh, there's so many people that have the same questions, the same issues. And so from there on, it was just like, it just blew our mind. So, yeah, it's been so much better after we, and that's why we're going back to the next one. Because yeah, that's we, a, it was good for our kids because they saw other kids that were experiencing something like them. And now they connect with it everywhere without any issues. And, uh, and for us, because we found other parents and it's so cool because now it doesn't feel like 
the world is so far away. I mean, yeah. look at us. Yeah. We're on the other side of the world, but we're still talking. I know. It, it is amazing. And I'm, I'm so excited that you were able to join us. I thought we were going to wait till you were in Bali and we were going to get the time zones quicker. So this is a, a lovely, pleasant surprise that we can show people that, you know, the time zones don't matter. And... Um, and yet it is a way for the kids to connect. It's different. It's not about judging whether it's right or wrong. It's just different. And it's you, different, yeah. Yeah. And you shared something earlier this week about the, the children, how easy they're finding it or how much, e I won't say easy because nothing's ever easy, but you're finding their confidence levels growing and yeah. their ability to connect. Yeah, they um, initially it was a little bit hard, especially for Emma the idea of leaving her friends or school and all those things. And then she started, after the World Schoolers, the summit, um, it was easier. It was like yeah. they, they had something in common that wasn't the things they had with her friends in school. So she realized that they're, you know, they're not that different or yeah, let's yeah. put it that way. And now whenever they meet someone new, they say, oh, we can keep, a, keep in contact. We, I have – so they, they do this, like, little um, – Facebook through my my um, my account. They talk with she talks with all these girls all yeah, over yeah. the world, and they play, they talk, they chat, they do all kinds of things. So they they are always connected, also if they're far away. And then when we go into place, they'll see each other again. So. Cool. So there you have it. That was Sarah Mass. And as I say, I just wanted to take a clip from a longer video because um, I think my interview with them did it. It was about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes a game, but that one did actually cut out. Um, we lost them while we were in Hoi An. So the, the video, the full length video didn't come to an actual conclusion. But if you want to see the rest of the half hour, 40 minutes, again, head on over to our Facebook page, uh, parentingpassportsandprofits.com. Uh, I think you'll find links to our Facebook page in the footer or somewhere down the, the home page and yeah and you and and go into videos and you'll find it so so today um yeah that was just me um leveling up and trying something new um I want to I've invited some people but obviously it's about lining up time zones and, and getting it all to fit in and this is meant to be a spontaneous fun show uh, and it, I mean, I'm here to take questions and answer any questions, but really bring on um, other people who are just um, pushing boundaries in whatever shape or form, whether that's just living a different life. And our world schooling families invariably fit into that category. They are, they've already made some big decisions with their lives. They're kind of outliers for a lot of things. And they, they always find they're very... You know, we have two family values, freedom of choice and meaningful relationships. And I find that when we meet other world schooling families, even if we know nothing about each other, the conversations can go deep and meaningful so much quicker because there's just this kind of in, inherent built in, um, you stop to think about what you really want out of life and you're doing something different that puts you, uh, you know, like kind of puts you as an outlier and you need a bit of a thick skin to be an outlier. You know, you're not going to be popular with friends and family, maybe. Um, and But that doesn't mean you've, you, you're wrong. It just means you've chosen a different path. And that requires a level of trust and confidence in yourself and, the, and those around you. So we love our world schooling community. Um, we can't get enough of them. And I'm going to stay committed to trying to bring more of them to the fore. I guess they don't all want to come out on live video, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. Let's say this is part of me leveling up. I want to be able to put on a, I want to be able to put on a show for you guys. I want to get better, and that's what I'm going to do. So that's probably a good time to wrap up. And uh, this is my 15th day uh, streak. Uh, so yeah, if you if you if you're watching live or watching the replay uh, and you haven't been here before, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up and, and let me know how, how I can make this better uh, for you. Let me know, uh, I mean, I don't even know things are like my camera is in focus. It looks a bit hazy on the screen, um, but I'm, I'm, I've got some feedback that this camera um, uh, uh, has a better view than this one. But yeah, the more feedback I get, the better I can make it. 
I think the sound is okay apparently. Um, but yeah, I want to level up uh, uh, to deliver a, a different show, a better show. So ask me questions, tell me where you want to go. Remember next week we've got Online Marketing uh, Mashup Monday where we'll discuss anything online around website pages, uh, email automation. We can um, show you behind the scenes of some of the tools we use. If you head on over to um, this page, you should be able to see our list of tools. Now I'm actually updating this page. Uh, this page is a, is a bit out of date and I'm um, trying to, um, we've refreshed all of our websites lately. So yeah, actually that, that'll be something. If you, if you want, head on over to our, any of our websites that I've shown you and tell us what you think. I'd love to know what you think. We um, All of them have been refreshed and rebranded. Oh, no.